Good morning and welcome to our daily reflection. So who can remember much from their school days? Some no doubt can remember many things as if it was yesterday. Like many, however, my memories are sketchy, might even be selective to say the least. Even though it was many years ago, I can remember the feeling of achievement after the final exam in my last year in primary school when I came second top to a girl who is now a professor at an acute care and cardiovascular research facility in an Australian university. Later, looking back at my Royal Navy career, there was always the encouragement to work your way up the promotional ladder. Even today, from school to career, our culture of values, ambition, competitiveness, and working our way to the top. Many films today deal with that same theme, getting to the top, such as The Godfather, or being the best, such as the recent Maverick Top Gun film. This is a world we live in today, getting to the next rung of the ladder while at the same time keeping ahead of competition. The reading set for today from the Gospel of John chapter 3 gives us a slightly different perspective. Then Jesus and his disciples left Jerusalem and went into the Judean countryside. Jesus spent some time there baptizing people. At this time, at this time, John the Baptist was baptizing at Enon near Salim because there was plenty of water there and people kept coming to him for baptism. A debate broke out between John's disciples and a certain Jew over ceremonial cleansing. So John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the river Jordan, the one you identified as a Messiah, is also baptizing people and everyone is going to him instead of coming to us. John replied, No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride, and the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand there with him and hear his vows. Therefore I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must, I must become less and less. He has come from above and is greater than anyone else. We are of the earth, and we speak of earthly things, but he has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else. This is the word of the Lord. In this reading, we can see how John the Baptist demonstrated a very different way of approaching the world that we are more familiar with. Instead of competing, trying to be better, it's easy to see how John openly defers to Jesus. Everyone in our world wants to be upwardly mobile, to get on with life, on to the next pay rise. But John the Baptist is now the opposite. He is voluntarily more downwardly mobile. But while John the Baptist and Jesus were baptising, to those watching this probably might have seemed like a context. In the next chapter, we discover, however, that Jesus himself wasn't doing the baptism. It was his followers. At this time, this wasn't the full, full-on Christian baptism. This came later. To John's disciples, however, territory was being challenged. They see two individuals doing more or less the same thing. They seem more in tune with our world today where we seem almost hardwired about competition, not just at work, but ex example might be with other drivers on the road. And many of us do still get quite animated watching football. And seeing this as competition, they remembered how John had recently had a good thing going, something many people were coming to, something that proved popular. Everything had been going well, but now, this Jesus character had come on the scene and was now taking away all the business. He seemed to be winning. Today it would be easy to understand how they may have felt, maybe somehow betrayed, wondering how they could get John's baptism back on track, maybe thinking up schemes such as sending spies to Jesus' baptism, partly to figure out why they were more popular. Maybe they could suggest to John if he could double his marketing budget. Or maybe, ultimately, 
he could decide that he needed to offer a new and improved baptism. But John himself saw the larger picture. He had previously called Jesus the Lamb of God. He fully understood that Jesus ranked higher than him and because he existed before him. That was how the Spirit of God had identified him to John. And finally, how John had testified that Jesus was indeed the long-awaited Son of God. And as we read this story, we should try to find ourselves in the place of one of John's disciples. How might we respond? Could John the Baptist himself in any way be a model for us in many situations we find ourselves today? I want to finish with the words from the Old Testament prophet Micah as a prayer. But he has already made it plain how to live and what to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbour. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously. But take God seriously. Amen. And whatever you do this coming week, keep a smile on your face. Bye for now. Goodbye.